Hey, what's up, party people? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, today is just Nick and myself, and we're just out here reflecting on life. Actually, just before, <laughs> and we just we thought of a topic, which I'll get Nick to share with us in a second. Yeah. Um, which is now. So Nick, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead and yeah, tell us. As you guys on. can see from the title, I think we're in a really like reflective state at the moment because it's just us. We're hitting close to our thirties now. We lived. A, a life where <laughs> it's long enough where, <laughs> where we've had ups, downs, and just a lot of stuff. And yeah. I think it, we felt like it was a good time for us to reflect. And when we look back, a lot of the things that really drew us closer to God in the recent years was actually our disappointments mm -hmm. and the hard times. So we felt like maybe interesting for some of you guys to actually hear us out when we talk about how these disappointments have actually brought us closer to God. Yeah. And I guess the first thing that I'll probably start off with was like, when we were in... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, cut that. But, <laughs> okay, when we were in our previous youth group, it was crazy <clears throat> because it was so much momentum. God was always there. We grew from like 60 to 400 and people getting saved every single week. Mm. Worship was popping off. Preaching was always on fire. People getting saved. Like so much was happening that we felt so great. Like our youth, like everything felt so good. Our right. spiritual lives felt so good. Yeah. But then it was till we left where I felt like a lot of our struggles and just reality kind of hit. Mm. We were growing up. Um, it was not that every single wow. week anymore. And my question, I guess, that I wanted to ask was, do you feel like since we left that you felt really burned out? As in like in an aspect of your faith and you with God, because you felt, do you think that we were serving so much that your faith was kind of built around the ministry rather than that personal connection with God? Mm. I mean, at the time, I probably would say, no, nah, that's not the case. Yeah. But now looking back and reflecting upon that, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. I think I was definitely burnt out. Or at least my, uh, what I was sourcing my energy from was not from the main source. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, now that you just, like, voiced it all out just then, it just made me think of how um, that time where, um, you know, when Jesus was resurrected and the disciples went to the tomb and all that. And, yeah, yeah. And then he was pretty much making his rounds and people were like, oh, Jesus is alive, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Thomas is like, well, I want to see him in, in person and I want to touch his wounds and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and then I'll believe. And I just think that like, that's kind of like what the faith was. Like it was so attractive back then because we were seeing these things, people being saved and all, all these crazy spiritual events. <clears throat> so like our faith was based on sight. You know, we saw these tangible things. Yes, you could say arguably we did feel the spirit in that. I mean, it, it, it did move. Yeah. But majority of it was like us basing it on all these happenings. We're like, okay, Jesus is definitely here, you know, like, like I'm growing, you know. And, and I think what I didn't, that's what we brought into, well, what I kind of speak for myself, what I brought in later on. See, like the next part of this verse, right? So what I'm trying to say is like Jesus says, uh, when Thomas comes into the room and sees Jesus, he's like, oh my gosh. And Jesus <laughs> is like, well, yes, he's like, I paraphrase, I don't know, like word for word. But it's like something like along the lines of like, you know, um, uh, what does he say? He says, blessed are, blessed are those that uh, believe me when they don't see me or something like yeah. that. Okay. I did not say it right. The jar of That's yeah. the jar translation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go back and then correct myself if I'm wrong. But it's along those lines. And it just made me think like, wow, like, you know, because just because there's no good in something doesn't mean God's not working in that. You know what I mean? Yeah. For example, right. So, yeah, based on sight and real roundabout way to answer your question. But, yeah, I, I really do think so. Like, my lines would, my, my wheels were not aligned. I had not changed my wheels for ages. That yeah. kind of vibe, you know do what I mean? Do you think it took you <clears throat> ages to recover from that season to bring you where you are now? Or do you still think you're dealing with it still? Uh, I, I think that I'm, yeah, I think, well, it was still, I think, okay. Honestly, I think I've worked my way out of that. But it was through maturing and, like, just you know journey yeah, yeah. kind of thing it's just yeah yeah, yeah no nah, it, it's interesting because when i look back i'm just like we talked so much while we were in leadership there going like you know make sure we're not like so focused on music going really well everything going so well like the numbers the people we got to keep it focused right 
But when I look back and then and knowing how it all turned out, I was like, what else could we have done differently to not let that stuff affect us? Because naturally, that's what you see every single week. Mm. And you can keep correcting yourself, but realistically, you will never know how kind of focused you are on all these things till I guess you kind of stepped out. Because yeah. that's what I feel like happened that no matter how much we talked about it, you never really feel it till you lost it. Mm. And then when we stepped out, that's when I realized like, wow, I feel like till this day, I still am somewhat recovering from it. Yeah. Going like, you know, what is my faith like <clears throat> built about? I mean, not built about, built on. Mm. Because I, I still like wish those things can happen. And for me, I'm like, those are results where we see when we know that we're doing something that God's like favor and hand is on. And for me, when I look back now, I'm just like, wow, that whole disappointing season has like followed me till this day. Because it was about like five years ago now that yeah. we left. Yeah. And it was crazy, right? Because after we left the church that we were there for since we were like 12 years old, I remember getting the feeling of being called to ministry. Mm. And I was in corporate at the time. And it was so strong that I couldn't, I couldn't fight it. I couldn't just like keep going on my daily job in corporate and not do anything about it. But then that was in a season where we, I wasn't in the church. We didn't know where to go. Mm. I don't know what opportunities came. I didn't really meet any people that could give me that opportunity. And four, wait, five years down the track now to where I am, I'm still holding on to that call, not knowing where. And, we are, and I'm going through another transition of our for church again. Mm. And so it's been like disappointment after disappointment where I just don't know what's next. Mm. And I don't know what to do. And, but I feel like when I look back now, all these disappointments actually, weirdly enough, grew me closer to God. Yeah. Because I'm like, God, I, I don't know what's next. And I don't know where to go. Yeah. But every single time that I've learned to kind of lean onto him and to just trust a little bit, an opportunity comes. Mm. I'm still not getting paid by church. I'm still not in a position where I wish I was. Mm -hmm. But I feel closer to God, which is like a really weird thing to say. Mm. And... When I look back now, I'm just like, if only I knew that earlier, mm. to just like lean and trust and, and kind of not focus so much on what can I do and just to let, know that I'm going to do what I can in front of me as best as I can. And then I'll let God do kind of the rest. Mm. Yeah, because I feel like when I've done that, a lot of my life kind of changed. Because I mean, knowing from you as well, um, you know, when you left, you felt that because your time in like serving in youth and everything was kind of over, that you had like a next season, right? Yeah. And was it kind of hard for you at the time where, I mean, you spoke about it in previous podcasts and stuff about, you know, your friends getting into relationships right. and you were single at the time. Mm -hmm. And like, did that kind of take an effect on you going like, God, what about me? <sighs> wow. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> But before we get to me, I just feel like let's, I, I want to point out a few things in your, your sharing yeah. just then that I really liked. And I can see God's hand on that was, you know, when you mentioned that, you know, you feel close to God despite all these disappointments. It, you could even coin the word hardships that you went through, right? But through these hardships, do you find yourself now a different person? Well, I feel like you can answer that better than well, I yeah, can. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, if I was to answer that, yeah, absolutely. You've changed a lot. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and you've even admitted to yourself now that now you're aware of certain things you were blind to before and are slowly unpacking those things. You're yeah. still improving, you know? And you even mentioned, like, you wish you knew this before, but God will always show us the destination, but not the journey. Because yeah. if we knew the destination, would we try as hard? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. And also another thing that I, I like uh, what you said was, you know, your obedience to the calling on, on your life. Yeah. When you were like, oh, you know, I'm going to drop this thing because I know God's called me for ministry, right? You haven't been paid. The ministry that we were just in was probably not I as ideal or what you had envisioned, yet you stuck and was obedient anyways. Yeah. God has led you to where you are now. But do you think that <clears> in <throat> some cases, though, would be reckless? Because I've had people talk to me about it where it's like, why did you have to drop it? Couldn't you just keep working until God gave you an opportunity? Then you go. Yeah. That, so how do you feel about that? <clears throat> that yeah, I get that. I get how um, people would say that. You know, because you know you have responsibility over a group of people, and you just kind of like get up and go. But I guess that's what it always seems on the outside. But I think 
yeah, it's always the question of, and I don't really have the answer myself, like when's the right time to go? Like when do you just, you know, throw in your towel and like say you've tried your best? You know, yeah. I mean, look, it's either, ugh, I don't want to get into all that, like <laughs> other things. I don't want to make this political, but there's a lot of other th- aspects and factors that contribute to these these decisions that people yeah. don't see, Yeah, you know? And as your friend, I've seen you fight for it. I've seen other people fight for it. And yeah, as much as like, it's not like you're you're like, oh, I want to go. Like, I, I hate this place. I want to leave. You know, you love the people at this church. But just because of cir- the, the circumstances that exist, it just makes it hard for you to be there. And that's understandable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there is a, you you try, you put your first fruits forward. You try your best. And if it doesn't succeed, then like, you know, God will, um, God is graceful and he's, he's loving and he'll pull you out and put you somewhere else. And then not to not to disregard this entire season as well don't yeah, yeah. you know you've learned a lot <laughs> and it was it was for a reason and it, like i heard before the saying is like you know for a season a reason or a lifetime oh wow that's actually really good so it's just a season for you yeah it's just a season for me and that's okay you know i know it's not um advised to uproot a lot but this is not like your intention to go in and be light and fairy and yeah, leave, yeah. you know you want we all thought we were going to be planted there forever mm. You know, yeah. So carry no guilt. God, it was not God's plan. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I appreciate that. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the hardest things. I think, like, when you go through a difficult season, what I've learned from that is that God puts us through that so that we can actually reflect a lot internally to see mm. what's there that yep. you would never see if things were <clears throat> so good. Like yep. I realized that, you know, I yeah one always speaks to me about it, and she's like, "You're so worried about what people think about you." Even when you're in a youth group leading, these are like a bunch of high school kids, but you're so worried if they like you or not. Mm. Then it stops you sometimes from saying what you feel that God has called you to say. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, they're just a bunch of kids. Why do I worry? But I think that's because I realize that that's how I see people. You know, I, I, my job or my role at the time or what I'm used to is analyzing the room, the situation, people like who are potential leaders, who are this and that, that mm. it seeped into how I saw like everything. So right. I, would, I would judge people or I would see people and kind of categorize them, yeah. not in a bad way, but just so in my mind, I know, okay, if they're good at this, I can use them for this and that and that. And I realized it went through in my whole life. Mm. And it was only because of this disappointing season that I got to reflect. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, why do I care so much about this that now God was, is able to kind of like pull me out of that and I w- actually worry less about what people think. I still struggle with it from time to time, yeah. but it's given me that confidence now. It's like, okay, this is what God has called me to do. And I just do it. Mm. And I get to see God working through my ability to just not care as much. Yeah. But I would have never done that if I think if I never gone through my disappointing season. Exactly. That, that, that just paints me the picture of this. Think the prodigal son, right? You yeah. know how he took the inheritance, he left and he partied like like a like a <laughs> yeah, madman, yeah. right? What if during that time he had infinite amount of money? Like his father had always just been giving him money. Would he have come back? Probably not, right? Probably not, yeah. Probably not. So in the same way, it's kinda like, you know, we go through these hardships, you know, he wouldn't have come to that realization of his sin, sinful ways if the money had kept had, had kept coming to support the lifestyle that he was living, right? Yeah. So it's like it's just cool to see, like, through these hardships, you know, this is the stuff that we get to see about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because do you feel like there was, like, because uh, how do you think that season, I think it's something that you spoke about pretty openly <clears throat> in the podcast, right? Like, taking it away from me and now you, it's yeah, like, yeah, back with, to the me. Whole, <laughs> with the whole singleness season, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was <clears throat> quite a long time that you were trying to find someone. Yeah. You know, you almost moved states. <laughs> Hell yeah, I did. You know, all that. I mean, heaven, like, yes. <laughs> Looking back at it now, the fact that you stuck through it and mm-hmm. you didn't give up, mm-hmm. you didn't like be like, oh, I'm so done with it and kind of just found whatever. You actually waited for someone that you know that God has called into your life that is good for you. And seeing that now, what do you think changed about you in that whole season? Mm. Or how did God use that to kind of draw you closer to him? Mm. I think it was when... It was a shift in uh, perspective. I think, like, going back to what you said earlier, is like, how did I feel seeing all my friends get engaged and, like, yeah. hitched up and coupled up and whatnot? I did feel a little bit left, left behind, you know? I did feel a little bit like, you know, I had been obedient. I felt like I've been working, like, but where's my provision? And in that, in that way, it's also kind of not right for me to think that way because then I'm selfish thinking, you know? I should be thinking selflessly. All right. So I think there's like what things changed for me as soon as that mindset shift. Like, oh, how do I put it into words? It's like 
I looked at, I think it was kind of at the, the point where I was like, I was still praying for it. You know, like, God, give me like a godly woman in my life, you know, like, and just, you know, I trust him with my future and stuff. And then as soon as I let go of that and was just like, you know, God, for now, I'm just going to be obedient with what I have in front of me. And I'm just going to work at it as hard as I can, which is fresh goods. Um, I think people if, have been following since the beginning. We had a little stint where it was a bit quiet or it was just me all the time. It was kind of just like me trying to be, not trying to like outwork everyone else in the group, but it was just me trying to be faithful with what God had given us, you know. And I was trying to do that, you know, try my best at youth and my, and my work at, at, at school and stuff when I was working as a chaplain. And then after that, that's when the pieces came together. It, sometimes it's all that, it's just that little shove that gets you to where you need to be, you know. And so that's what happened, you know, <laughs> like... I've been on the app for, for like ages, you know, like on and off. Yeah. But then this one time, it just, it just took one day, one conversation, and here we are a year yeah, later. And here we are. A year and a bit later, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I think, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it, it's just crazy because I think <clears> when you were talking, I think it just reminded me like God puts us in disappointing situations like this because what he wants you to do is actually draw your needs and wants back to him yes that's it because that's something that i learned so much like i'm like man i still want you know austin Martin, like a nice car <laughs> nice house uh -huh. like to be able to not worry about money and mm. stuff like that um all for fresh goods to be big so we can travel and help people and talk to people and all this stuff but i think what i learned from this disappointing season was like all I wanted was actually to just know God better and to know that he's real in my life. Yeah. And when that became the most important thing, that's when he started providing all these other things. That's it right there. I think that's like, honestly, the, the ultimate thing that I've yeah. learned and the only way we learn through our disappointments, it, I mean, the only way that we can learn this is through our disappointments. Right. Like it's where nothing else is working. So we have no choice but to actually be in a place like, God, I just need you. Exactly. And because of that, all the other things don't seem as important anymore. Mm. So when he starts blessing you with the stuff, you're like, oh, cool. He actually did answer it. Yeah. But it's not as big of a deal anymore because for me, my focus is getting to know God better and to bring people closer to God. Mm. Yeah. And for me, like, I'm so glad that we went through our disappointments so that we can actually understand that now yeah. and help people that are going through it. If anyone here is listening, like you are stuck. Mm. It may be for a year or two or more, but to know that, you know, God's doing this so that he can draw his focus back to him. And mm. then because of that, he can bless you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you get so distracted, even if he wants to bless you, you will not even notice it. Because True. all you are so, op like, obsessed about and thinking about is about what you want. Yeah. Rather than what you need. So, Oof. Oh, I don't okay, know, crazy. that. Um, but yeah, but I mean, I guess to close and stuff, was there any other thoughts that you may have wanted to add of what you feel like um, the people listening or made it to this point um, can get out if they're still going through their season at the moment? Yeah, I think, ooh, correct, uh, you spot me on this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I was just thinking like uh, the thought of like the condition of your heart really just rang out to me just then because of like everything, you know, the way that we make our decisions comes from the motives of our, our heart and our yeah. intentions. And I think when you reflect on some things that, have been disappointing you you should probably look to where your heart was at the time you know as, and it's, sometimes it's not as obvious as you think like for example you know it, I, I was f deeply i've shared this in a, a previous podcast i was humbled so bad in our first youth group because you know no one came for me for help and i thought i was like the guy you know mm. i was like put in this position no one came to me and then there was a, a new position made for me because it was like nothing for me to really do <laughs> the lights just went off guys <laughs> oh yeah by the way this is an ASMR um, just audio only episode but yeah, <clears throat> yeah now my train of thought let me come back to what I was is trying to the think the condition of your heart condition of your heart yes they had made a motives ah uh, yes because yeah. like at that time it was admiration you know or like even when I was looking for a girlfriend what was that to feel like your everyone need, else yeah. you know to feel my selfish desires it wasn't you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. and once your, your your heart condition changes everything will naturally change as well because your perspective on life would look different yeah but yeah it's getting pretty dark in here so i think that's a good way to <laughs> yeah like i mean yeah you, you're spotting me right how that sound was that no, all right? that was good okay, cool, until cool, the cool. lights went off but that. <clears throat> i think yeah no it's been a, wow it's actually quite a nice reflective chat <laughs> yeah there you go yeah, I hope you guys got out something out of it. If you made it this far and you're going through disappointing seasons at the moment, um, just chuck us a message, a DM. If you need a prayer, just chuck it too. Mm. Um, yeah, we just want to build a community as always and we 
Um, just want to help you guys out. Yes. Oh, actually, let's end with prayer because I'm going to oh. try to end with prayer nowadays. Aye, aye. Okay, why okay. don't you, you give it a shot? Yeah, okay. So I'll just close us in prayer and then we'll just end the episode. All right, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you, God, for every single person that is tuning in, listening in. Uh, to this episode, I pray, God, that for anyone that's going through a disappointing time in, them, in their life, a disappointing season, I pray, God, that may they see your goodness and be able to draw close to you, Father. For whatever they seek, God, may they have. Uh, I just pray that may they, may they be diligent in, in their relationship with you, and I just pray that you be with them, God. And, and I just pray, God, that may those listen uh, just you know, give their hearts to you, Father, and may the condition of their heart be examined, and may they see uh, where you want them to work. May the Holy Spirit show them and discern for them wh- what needs to be worked on and wh- where they need to go from here. So Lord God, bless them, be with them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. <laughs> Peace out. Peace.